Welcome to Get In, the software-defined vehicle podcast from BlackBerry. With this series, we're diving into what the future of transportation just might look like. So don't just stand there, get in. Welcome to CES 2024. I'm Steve Kofsky, Senior Editorial Director for BlackBerry, and uh, very pleased you could join us and extremely pleased that Matthias could join us this morning. And um, Matthias Erickson, uh, tell us a little bit about what your role is and um, how long you've been at BlackBerry. Just give us a little background. No, oh, just very briefly. Um, again, I've run the IoT business unit. Um, I've been with BlackBerry for two and a half years. And what you have here at CES is basically uh, my team showcasing what we've done the last five months. Well, there's a lot to be very excited about, very proud of. The company's almost 40 years old. That's true. And it has never been more at the cutting edge of technology than it is today. I agree with that. Expand on that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, if we take the historical perspective, everybody knows the the history of uh, BlackBerry on the phone side. Obviously, John Chen set the company on a different path. He invested very heavily in a cybersecurity business, but he also uh, started looking at some of the other IP assets that uh, BlackBerry had accumulated over time. And at the heart of that, that asset base is QNX, our software development platform for advanced edge compute. And um, around that asset base, we have built a number of products for customers that uh, really need the highest performance, the highest safety, the highest security for edge compute. And, and that is essentially what we're showcasing here, and that, that's the heart of our portfolio. Well, BlackBerry has always put a lot of its uh, earnings into R&D, mm. and I think a lot of that found its way into QNX in the past couple of years because um, the latest version of QNX is... Uh, really a, a, uh, a, a step change in, uh, in performance and capabilities. Talk a little bit about that and, and what impact that's having here at CES this year. Yes. Uh, so in terms of the names in our portfolio, uh, we call our core platform the SDP uh, 7, 8, etc. And this year's release is called SDP 8, Software Development Platform 8. And it it really should have had a different name because it is a step change in, in performance. Uh, essentially, uh, BlackBerry's software development platform for Edge Compute uh, was created to provide the highest safety and security uh, at the edge. But that safety and security has always come at a price. It has come at the price uh, of performance in certain use cases. You, you can think of, if you want to make it safe and secure, you, you sort of have to make some trade-off somewhere. Okay? Yeah. And... Um, Ten years ago, we released the last uh, version of this software development platform that was a major uh, kernel release. Um, four years ago, we started uh, the R&D to take that last uh, restriction away. And that's what we've done with SDP8. So it's a platform that has been in development for four years, uh, significant R&D. It's literally a microsurgery on, on the kernel itself. And what we managed to achieve is a linear scaling with the number of cores uh, for edge compute. And that is very, very important because in general, not just in automotive, but across all our industry segments, um, everybody's deploying more compute power at the edge. And you want to make sure that, you know, you have the capability in the software to take advantage of that compute power, but obviously you cannot compromise safety and security. So it's a major release, four years in development, lots of IP associated with it. We have talked about it before. Uh, we talked about it last year. We had sort of a sneak peek and early access and so forth. We promised we were going to get it delivered this year, and the team delivered. Uh, we GA'd that in December, and uh, we're here showcasing. Automotive is is definitely a huge focus for QNX, yeah. but the QNX operating system has application far beyond that. Let's talk a little bit about some of those other applications and what you see happening. Yes, so so let's just take a step back and recap sort of the, the overall situation. So several years ago, uh, we decided very deliberately to focus on automotive. Why did we decide to focus on automotive? Well, uh, we saw that uh, in terms of IoT more broadly, in terms of edge compute, there was simply no other compute platform at the edge that, again, had more compute, more memory, more connectivity, more sensors, more complexity, and so forth. So the, the basic idea was, you know, if you can serve the most complex use cases, the most difficult edge IoT, uh, IoT edge uh, point, you know, that will spill over to other industries. Yeah. Uh, so we have, because of that, focused on automotive, but many of the things we do 
uh, are very much applicable to many other industries. And to your point, we have customers across a broad range of other industries in what is generally uh, called sort of the, the gem industries, the general embedded uh, industries. So, uh, to give you some examples, where, where do we see uh, other industries being at the cutting edge? So obvious ones, robotics. So, you know, you autonomy and robotics in general, uh, we are uh, working with all the leading uh, players in that space. It's not the same volume, it's not the same scale yet, but you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's moving up. Uh, medical, uh, there are uh, many edge compute use cases and devices that have the same requirements on, you know, the highest safety, the highest security and, and performance is scaling. You know, you think of surgical robots, for example, you you want to make sure they, they perform. Well, yeah. Anything that looks like a car, so commercial vehicles, you know, uh, whether it's trucks or buses or, you know, uh, mining, construction equipment, anything that has similar characteristics is also on this, this path. And then the largest of them all is probably industrial automation. So, you know, in general, I would say industrial automation because of how supply chains reconfigured over the last 25 years was not necessarily the focus across all manufacturing, but that has changed very, very rapidly over the, the five last five years for geopolitical reasons. And it's it's back front, left and center from my perspective. And and the robots in uh, in industry, industrial manufacturing, so they're many, getting much more sophisticated. They have many more capabilities. And that's where we come in. When, when you have the highest requirements for, you know, again, safety, security, reliability, and performance, that's when QNX plays. So long-term, I, I would argue that uh, the other industries is prob are probably a bigger opportunity for us than automotive, but automotive is clearly the lead uh, at this point. Okay. Let's talk about Ivy for a minute. Okay. Because um, uh, you have increased what you can do at the edge mm. enormously. Yeah. And maybe that's even pushed out the need to do connectivity because some of the, some of the uh, uh, proof of concepts that I've seen here they're doing amazing things. And it turns out they can do it all at the edge with the the uh, horsepower in the car. I, I think maybe cars even aren't going to be rated by horsepower in the future. Maybe, you know, oh, my car has 64 cores. How many, you know, how many cores is your? But um, uh, so uh, yet that cloud connectivity is very important. And some of the capabilities of Ivy, now that it's in, uh, in general availability, yeah. I see it really getting traction here at the show. What do you see? Yes. So, I mean, first of all, uh, let's be clear. The cloud is extremely important. It's the foundation for yep. all compute, more or less, uh, today. And it's not so much that, you know, compute has moved to the edge. It's that there's so much need for more compute in general. So the, the cloud is continuing its, you know, 10-year meteoric rise. But if you take the modern car as an example, you know, you're talking, for certain cars, terabytes of data per hour. You cannot send all that data to the cloud. It doesn't matter what pipeline you have to the cloud. It's just too much data. And why would you do it when you can do it faster and, you know, safe and secure at the edge? So I agree with you. There is significant more edge compute for the next decade. But make no mistake, the cloud is also continuing to ramp very, very heavily. And that's yeah. that's at the heart of this partnership that we have with AWS. I mean, we the, the whole idea of Ivy was there is a, an exponential data growth problem at the edge. And many people have tried for many years to solve it, but you know we're not quite there yet. So why don't, you, why don't you take the best at the edge in terms of compute and capabilities, which is QNX by far, if you ask me. Yes. And then you know, AWS is arguably the best in the cloud. And you, you've combined those two you know, fundamental uh, technology capabilities and you offer a platform for companies which have different core businesses, but they still have the need to process all this data. And, and that's what we've done. And to your point, Ivy, we've uh, made significant progress over the last couple of years together with AWS. Last year, we showcased a number of use cases. This year, we showcased many more use cases. And you can see how the platform ha has matured. And, and we're very excited about the future of Ivy. You have the opportunity to mm. talk to some of the Ivy partners, talk to some of the companies that have already deployed Ivy, and now you have actual uh, uh, yes. design wins and yes. and uh, production plans. And uh, they will tell you it, it, it is really uh, quite remarkable mm. what happens when you take all of those sensors and, and normalize that data and can uh, capture it and, and uh, harness yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, a couple of other uh, important mm. things here at the show. One, I know that you're very excited, is QNX for sound. Mm. 
tell us a little bit about this. This is an important uh, development. Yes, and there, there's so much to talk about when you, when you talk about sound uh, in the car. I, simplistically, you know, there are many, many different components of sound in a car. Uh, you know, you everybody's using voice recognition, everybody's using their hands free. There's the audio and media, audio and media component uh, in the car. You need noise reduction, you know, the Roy nose, the tire nose, noise, et cetera, et cetera. And to make a long story short, traditionally, the way you have dealt with, with uh, sound and acoustics in the car is you've had a number of different boxes taking care of a sort of a single dimension of that sound function. Because of the evolution of the architecture uh, and because of the consolidation of many functions into high-performance compute for, for example, digital cockpit, there is a massive opportunity to consolidate sound functionality, make it easier to deploy, easier to advance, uh, cheaper, faster, better uh, using software. And we have, for historical reasons, been very strong in sound. You remember our heritage on, on the QNX side came from an integrated stack. So we have a lot of you know, media and audio capability. And uh, our engineering uh, team invested many years ago in, in building on that capability. We have quite a lot of IP associated with, uh, with sound. And at this show, we have taken all those capabilities and we've packaged them together into a portfolio that we call QNX Sound. And essentially think of it as consolidated acoustics man uh, management in the core uh, using a software platform. And it has tremendous benefits. As I said, you know, faster time to market, better services, uh, less complexity, less cost, et cetera, et cetera. And if, if you haven't had a chance of diving into that with the team and go through the demo, I would highly encourage it. We're, we're very excited. And we have our first design win for, uh, for QNX. So. Still hush, hush. We can't talk about it. No, we cannot. But, but that's, that's coming. So uh, that's, a great, that's a great thing to learn. Um, you talk about cost of the vehicle. And I think uh, perhaps that's a very important consideration at this at this time mm. when uh, there's a lot of pressure from mm. uh, Chinese makers and, yes. and other regions that can have shown that can produce yep. uh, EVs at a very different price point of course. than what they're available now uh, for in yep. North America and in Europe. Um, what what does does QNX, what does uh, BlackBerry allow in terms of empowering automakers to reduce their costs and meet consumer demand? Yeah, so what is the mantra? The mantra is faster, better, cheaper. Uh, and the great news, we believe, is that that's exactly our proposition. It's faster, better, cheaper. And, you know, software is such a powerful tool uh, for dealing with complexity if you do it right. So, you know, cars today have a tremendous amount of complexity, both on the hardware side and on the software side. And when you, you start deploying these, what we call foundational platforms, I, you know, the QNX software development platform, Ivy is a foundational platform, Sound is a foundational platform. What, you, what you're really doing is a couple of different things. So first of all, you are freeing up software resources, precious software resources uh, for customers and partners that, you know, have a massive task. I, I, I come back to, I, I have tremendous respect for the leaders in OEMs, it's arguably one of the most difficult jobs you can have at this point. You're hit from every angle. So you have a lot of stuff that you need to get done. Yeah. So allowing OEMs uh, to spend less time on the foundational stuff, spend less time on, uh, as uh, John Wall likes to say, you know, uh, the plumbing of the software stack, basically elevating your software engineers to not having to care about what hardware and what drivers and the libraries... It, just move them up in the stack so they can focus on what are the applications, the services that drive value for a consumer. Tremendous efficiencies, um, you know, cost savings, time to market. Yeah. And by the way, the core proposition for, for QNX, safety and security, because that, that comes by default. Though. Um, and then on top of that, you have this notion of step, and step by step, which is sort of the very definition of the software-defined vehicle, step by step, you are moving more and more of the defining functionality from hardware to software. And it goes without saying that if you get the software right, that has the same benefits, faster, better, cheaper. So I, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a long journey. It has uh, 10 years to run easily, yeah. uh, but it's an exciting journey and we believe it would have tremendous benefits. Well, um, I think you make a, a great uh, argument for consolidation and uh, in the operating system in these foundational parts of it and 
using a trusted partner for yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, that is, th there's there's always that builder by mm. um, mentality, and yeah. and uh, it, and it's an important question for the OEMs to face. Um, it it looks like maybe economics are are uh, forcing their hand a little bit uh, that that will help them make that decision. Um, but BlackBerry is also doing more things to invest in uh, this precious resource of software development talent. And um, one of the, uh, which, which is going to uh, allow them to have uh, higher performance, it's gonna, be, it's gonna make them better, faster, cheaper, yeah. if we can help them do that. Um, making uh, QNX available to a larger community, even free to the academic yeah. community and things like that, is a, is a huge step and uh, one I'd like, like you to talk about. Yes, so so we uh, we actually made a, a formal announcement uh, uh, also at this event around that direction. So, what have we announced? We have announced that uh, we're going to let QNX be available for non-commercial use uh, broadly across the world. And why are we doing that? Well, we're doing that because first of all, um, allowing bigger access and, and easier access to to these tools creates more people that actually have worked with the platform from uh, from day one. One of the challenges as a commercial software provider is that there is sort of a barrier to get access to all the tools. There's a barrier to, you know, be able to work on uh, on the software platform and so forth. And there there's a tremendous need for more QNX software engineers. Not not just for us, but you there was a uh, an industry analyst last year that uh, asked me a similar question and he had done a little bit of basic research around the hiring uh, associated with you know system level capability on on QNX, and he said, "Well, Matthias, you have you know a hundred software X rolling continuously. Uh, you're looking for a hundred software engineers at any uh, any day of the year." I did a quick scan, and you know it's twenty twenty five times that in the rest of them, your customers and your partners. So, so the need for QNX um, experience capability uh, is is tremendous. And one way of easing that pressure is to make it much more easier, uh, even for you know students, academic purposes, you know non-commercial use, fast prototyping, and so forth, uh, through allowing people not to have to pay and and sort of get started. And it's going to be a big thing. We have just started. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to make it efficient, but it, it's a major initiative from our uh, side, and it's going to you know roll out over the next couple of years here. Okay. Well, I, I can think of very admirable and. And of course, I mean it's self-serving as well. It is, but, some, yeah, sure. But it's going to uh, uh, tremendously help uh, yeah. as the the automakers and the whole community. And uh, you know about kind of raising up that that whole community. Yep. Um, the work that BlackBerry is doing with Motor Trend um, in uh, selecting individuals and organizations that are really moving the needle and yes. and moving the software defined vehicle forward. Um, that seems to be having some traction. And it, what are your feelings about it? It it, it has resonated actually beyond beyond our expectations. And I, I think we talked about it last year, uh, and we've had a couple of other iterations on on this specific topics. But just to to recap, what what are we trying to do? So you know, we are a foundational software player. We work with everybody, and because we work with everybody, we hear what the key problems are. And going back to this notion of a you know decades long uh, transformation in, for example, the automotive industry, everybody has the same problem. Yeah. What what is the problem? Uh, you know that value creation and value capture is going to you know continue to come to much much larger extent from software. So you need to become good at software, and it's a di very difficult task. I mean, software is different from mechanical engineering, from electrical engineering, from you know operations and manufacturing and. You know, that's where our industry came from to a large extent. Though. So the original idea was uh, essentially trying to um, lift the awareness, not just within automotive, but also outside of, of automotive, around the great work that software engineers are starting to do or are doing already within, within the automotive industry. And what is the self-serving purpose of that? Well, the self-serving purpose of that is, you know, we want the best and the brightest from from all universities everywhere in the world to think automotive when they think about a software career. Yeah. And that has not been the case. I mean, let, let's be self-critical and honest. You know, you typically went to the uh, hyperscalers and, you know, media and advertising and, and all that stuff. We we strongly believe that, you know, at, at a, as of this moment in time and for the next five, 10 years, 
the most interesting uh, software problems. If you're a software engineer making a career in software, they are in automotive. There's the complexity is the highest. The problems have the biggest impact if you solve them, and and that's the the backdrop of that award. So shine the spotlight on all the heroes of you know the software defined vehicle. Lift them up. Uh, give them a, a, an opportunity to to talk about their work. And hopefully over time and uh, steps, it will attract more and more of the best and the brightest to the industry. Well, you've given us a great overview of, I think, all of the uh, the key things that you're bringing to bear here at CES 2024. What are we going to be talking about next year? We, when we gather for CES 2025, what do you think we'll be celebrating? So this story uh, for this year is a continuity story from last year. So essentially we talked about uh, all these great product launches and things we we're going to do in uh, calendar year 2023. Essentially, we said this is going to be the biggest product launch year in, in a decade. And uh, now we're back and we're basically saying, look, we told you we're going to do this and we have done it. So again, this this year has been the biggest product launch year for us uh, in a decade. We're very excited and, and we're showcasing the output. If I look at big things going forward without talking too much about it, because we, we want to keep a few of those things for, uh, for the things that we're doing over this, over the, during the spring here. You know, first of all, this obviously a very significant execution task. Uh, so if you think about all these products, you know, being generally available for customers and partners, we're a B2B business in long cycles. So, you know, just because you have launched a product, it's not like you're throwing it over the fence to a retailer and it just shows that there's a yeah. lot of work associated yeah. with building these stacks. And so it's a very significant execution task. Um, and secondly, uh, broad strokes, uh, what is happening is in this foundational software story, we have said with the bottom of the stack, we're helping you with certain things, the bottom of the stack, we have more capabilities, but that's our focus more and more customers over the last year, uh, as they dig deeper into what we do, they say, well, that's great, but can, can you do a little bit more? <laughs> can, you, can you take a few more middleware layers? Can you help us in this area? So what we have started talking about uh, with many customers at present is to, to actually expand the, that foundational software definition, uh, adding more capabilities to the core uh, OS at the bottom of the stack. And that ties nicely into the QNX Everywhere uh, program. And mm -hmm. I am very excited about it because it, it essentially it means that you you have the opportunity to help customers and partners even more. Um, and you get deeper into, you know, their real problems and uh, so forth. So yes. a lot uh, to come in, in that area over the next 12 months. Okay. Well, um, you know, a lot of companies talk about being customer focused. And, and AWS is one, you know, if you look at their, their 10 or 12, uh, you know, commandments, one is to be customer focused. We don't talk a lot about it, but uh, uh, BlackBerry lives it. QNX lives it every day, and it, it's it's come through in everything you've said. I think um, you're to be congratulated for what the you've team. accomplished and the team, yep. and um, wish you nothing but success in the year ahead. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for spending some time with us. Thank you for spending some time with us, and definitely check out QNX on the web and of course here at CES. That's the end of our episode for today. If you'd like more information on the topics or our guests, please check out blackberry.com slash podcast. Get In, the Software Defined Vehicle Podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest episodes. Thanks for joining us.